So I forgot to finish off lesson one, foolish me, about where do you place meters in order to measure these things? And if any of you start doing some of your own electronic troubleshooting, you'll have to kind of figure this out, all right? So can you turn to lesson one where it says part D, electric meters, as a picture of a light bulb? So current and voltage are measured using ammeters for current and voltmeters respectively. Consider the following circuit. So the real circuit, we're running a battery in our circuit drawing. There's our resistor. If I wanted to measure current, I want to set it up so that all of the positive charges, I know it's not the positive charges that are moving, but let's pretend they are. I want to set it up so that all of the positive charges are moving through the circuit, are moving through the meter. Why, don't write this down, why would this not work to measure current? Well, a bunch of skiers would go down that path and I wouldn't measure them. So what we say is this, to measure current, you actually need to break the circuit and stick the ammeter in the circuit in series. That would be correct. This would be incorrect because skiers could be traveling through here and they wouldn't be going through the meters. Remember, current is like skiers. Basically, we're saying if you want to know how many skiers are on the mountain, you got to have them all go through the gate while you count them. You can't have a second gate open over there. Okay. What about for voltmeters? Remember, voltage, what's my analogy for voltage? It starts with letter H. To measure the height of anything, you actually have to measure two locations, the bottom and the top. To measure the voltage, you actually have to, and you'll find this is true when you're using a voltmeter, any voltmeter always has two probes, a red one and a black one, because black is negative and red is positive in circuitry language, and you have to touch the circuit in two different locations, because you're measuring the potential difference, the height between them. Voltmeters have to be in parallel. Voltmeters have to be in parallel. This would not measure the voltage correctly. This would be incorrect. Okay. Uh, I also, technical comment, we've been focusing on direct current. Most of what I'm teaching you also works for alternating current as well. Okay. So I didn't talk about that in lesson one. Now let's go back to lesson four. What's your homework? Lesson five, what's your homework? That's what I meant to say. Lesson five, yes, thank you. Okay. Number one. Number two. Number three. Four is good. Five is weird because of where the battery is. Label downhill, if you really don't like the way it's written, you can always rewrite it. But I'll give you that just because not all circuit diagrams will put the battery in a nice convenient location off to the side. Oh, what's number six want you to find? I'm not convinced you'll need to rewrite this. I see two things. I would start there. You might be able to get away without rewriting it. Number seven, you don't need to rewrite this one either. They told me that three amps goes through the six ohm resistor. That's enough that you can hopscotch your way there. I'm not going to give you one as tricky as number seven on the test, but it's a nice brain teaser. Eight is good. You can skip nine. So you've got... I was hoping to give you 30 minutes. You got 29 minutes to work on stuff and ask me questions.